Following the introduction of modifications which had been indicated by the results of full-scale tunnel testing of the Avro car at NASA Ames Research Center, a continuation test program was begun. The objective of this program was to prove the effectiveness of the new control system from hovering through transition in the presence of the ground up to free flight conditions. The program consisted in the main of further wind tunnel tests at Ames Research Center to prove the effects of these modifications with a short flight test program at Avro to establish that the hovering capability had not deteriorated. A brief terrain test program was later added. The modifications provided for aft deployment of the peripheral jet sheet from the wing tip for transition and forward flight. Both vehicles were modified, one for further static and flight testing at the Avro facility and the other for tests in the 40 by 80 foot tunnel at Ames Research Center. The changes were confined mostly to the wingtip, which was modified to divert the annular jet aft for increased forward thrust and improved aerodynamic and control characteristics. Transition doors, which extend around the sides and rear of the vehicle, act as flow splitters to divert the flow gradually from the annular hovering nozzle to the new wingtip nozzle for transition to forward flight. With the transition doors in the forward flight position, wingtip cascades at each side of the vehicle direct the jet flow aft. Pitch and roll control in forward flight is provided by the addition of six control vanes which operate in conjunction with the existing focusing control ring. On completion of the modification program, the vehicle was installed in the static test rig for functional checking of the new control system and to determine as far as possible that the vehicle performance in the ground cushion had not deteriorated as a result of the modifications. Lift, propulsive thrust, and rolling and pitching moments were measured during the four-hour static test program. For rig testing, the control system was actuated by an external hydraulic system to be sure of maximum control movement. Tufting was used to provide a visual indication of control vane operation and jet flow. On completion of rig testing, the hovering behavior of the aircraft was checked in the tethers before commencing free flight. It should be understood that the original objective of the flight testing in this program was simply to determine that installation of the modifications had not resulted in deterioration of the vehicle performance achieved during previous tests. Early flights revealed that some deterioration in stability and control had in fact resulted from introduction of the modifications and a number of flights were required to restore the vehicle performance in this respect. During this six-hour flight test program, various minor experimental modifications were therefore made to the hovering control system and to the central jet configuration.
The forward speed of the Avro car, with the transition doors closed, was found to equal the speed previously achieved. Operation of the transition doors was attempted, but it was determined that the pneumatic boost available for the control system was not sufficient to overcome the large asymmetric load on the focusing control ring. A more powerful control actuation system is planned for future development. In its current configuration, the Avro car was operating successfully in the ground cushion at a height of three feet and speeds up to 30 knots. Preliminary results from the new series of tests at Ames Research Center were also satisfactory. It was now desirable to extend the Avro car's operation and the program was extended to include flights over various types of unprepared terrain and natural obstacles. Initial tests over gravel and small surface irregularities presented no problems. We were now confident of the vehicle's ability to negotiate appreciable obstacles and a rugged course, partially gravel and partially grass, with a three-foot deep ditch, was selected for the next flights. Again, the Avro car covered the course successfully, becoming, as far as we know, the first ground effect machine to negotiate obstacles of this nature. The vehicle had now clearly demonstrated its ability to operate over unprepared terrain, and landing pads were installed in place of the wheels for the following phase of testing, which included operation over soft ground. A number of flights were made over this course, which had a rough eroded grass surface and a short one in eight gradient. During most of these early tests, ingestion of low density material presented some difficulty. The fuel control unit filters became blocked with small particles, causing the engines to be starved and resulting in flights of short duration. The problem was caused largely by dead grass and weeds.
In an attempt to reduce the ingestion problem, screens were fitted to the engine inlets. No great improvement was achieved as the coarser material tended to block the inlets while fine particles still reached the fuel control filters. Introduction of additional filters resulted in some improvement and it is anticipated that this handicap will be overcome with little difficulty during further development. In preparation for the final contractual demonstration, a representative course was selected where the vehicle could demonstrate its capability while remaining in view of the observers. The course was laid out to cover concrete, grass, and gravel surfaces and included four ditches. Precise directional maneuvers were necessary to avoid surface obstacles. Check flights over this course were performed as the next part of the terrain test program. Erosion due to jet impingement was not found to present a serious problem and after numerous flights over the same course, only temporary grass browning occurred. In previous flights, the Avro car had always flown directly over ditches encountered in the course. In order to prove that the ground cushion was not destroyed by sustained flight over depressions along which the jet may tend to travel, it was decided to hover the vehicle over the ditch and then fly out. Before the actual flight demonstration, the Avro car was flown by a pilot from the United States Air Force Flight Test Center. Familiarization flights were first made over the concrete apron. Additional flights were then made over the demonstration course previously negotiated by Avro's test pilot.
Despite unfavorable weather on the day of the flight demonstration, the Avro car again displayed its ability to operate over terrain which had hitherto been beyond the capability of ground effect machines. In summary, the flight test program at Malton, concluding with this flight demonstration, was carried out concurrently with an extensive 54-hour test program on the second vehicle at Ames Research Center. The tunnel tests showed that if the known thrust losses were to be reclaimed, then the originally estimated performance was realistic. Also, that with the new transition control, transition from the ground cushion to in-flight was feasible. Throughout the entire Avro car development program, vehicle performance has been compromised due to thrust deficiencies, and it is apparent that if height and speed are to be increased, an increase in thrust is essential. Studies already carried out indicate that a considerable thrust increase could be achieved by reducing turbine tip clearances and by redesign of the ducts, particularly in the region of the final nozzle. With a suitable thrust improvement program, it is believed that a static thrust in the order of the original estimate can be obtained, thus enabling the Avro car to achieve vertical takeoff and free air transition to forward flight. program of research and development in the field of disc flight, which was started in 1952, is being conducted by Avro Aircraft Limited at Malton, Ontario. Early studies on behalf of the United States Air Force proved the feasibility of a circular planform vertical takeoff aircraft utilizing a system of peripheral jets for propulsion, stabilization, and control. 
The current phase of the program entails the design and construction of the Avro car, an 18-foot diameter test vehicle for the United States Army. The Avro car will take off vertically and carry a useful load of over one ton for 125 miles. It is intended primarily for operation within 400 feet of the ground over terrain of not more than 10,000 feet altitude at level flight speeds up to 225 knots. When the basic design criteria for the vehicle were established, construction of a full-scale wooden mock-up was started. Radially disposed ribs with covering skin form the primary structure. Unlike the actual vehicle, which is manufactured in three segments, the mock-up was built in two halves. A covered superstructure of beams and partitions form compartments for the crew, power plant, equipment and cargo. The vehicle is powered by three Continental J69 engines driving a turbo rotor located in a central air inlet. The turbo rotor expels air through ducts formed by the ribs and skins to a nozzle at the wing periphery for propulsion and control. A separate fuel tank is installed for each engine. Exhaust gases from the engines, which act as gas generators, are directed through tusk-shaped ducts onto the turbine section in the turbo rotor. As detailed design information became available, the installation of systems and equipment progressed. The completed mock-up provided a dimensionally accurate and fully representative model for evaluation prior to construction of the first Avro car. During manufacture of the first vehicle, the mock-up continued to provide an invaluable check on the arrangement, location and clearances for various installations. A 1 20th scale model designed and manufactured for use in the Avro ejector wind tunnel provided preliminary data on the aerodynamic characteristics of the Avro car both in hovering and in forward flight. To provide more detailed aerodynamic data, a one-fifth scale model of the Avro car was designed and constructed for testing in the Massey Memorial Wind Tunnel at Wright Air Development Center. Before being dispatched to WADC for installation in the tunnel, the model and its supporting structure, together with integral force balance, were assembled. Tests were carried out to check the functional behavior of the model and the balance. Wind tunnel tests, including flow visualization tests, were performed to determine aerodynamic characteristics and pressure distribution during takeoff, hovering, transition, and forward flight. To investigate the unique system of propulsion and control to be used in the Avro car, a full-scale 20-degree segment of the peripheral nozzle and outer portion of the wing was constructed. Tests were performed at the Orenda Engines test establishment at Nobel. Here, air flows and pressures could be provided to the segment to match those supplied by the turbo rotor in the actual vehicle. Two spoiler rings in the throat of the peripheral nozzle deflect the jet flow for pitch and roll control.
instrumentation was installed to supply data to automatic recorders and manometer boards in the control room. Vertical takeoff and hovering are achieved by downward deflection of the peripheral jet, which in the proximity of the ground produces appreciable thrust augmentation. Transition from hovering to forward flight is achieved by rearward deflection of the jet. This hovering model was built to investigate the system of stabilization used in the Avro car. An electrically driven gyro in the center of the model simulates the turbo rotor and operates gates controlling the emission of air at each tip of the cruciform. Because the center of gravity of the Avro car is located approximately in the center of the circular planform, stabilization in pitch and roll is required. On the vehicle, the gyroscopic characteristic of the turbo rotor is used to sense the rate of imbalance in pitch and roll and introduce corrective bias into the flight control system. Later in the program, the 120th scale model was modified to provide vertical damping data. This information, together with results from previous tests, was used in conjunction with a simulation study being performed on an electronic analog computer. analog computer was operated as a flight simulator with representative controls and instrumentation. Response of the airplane to disturbances of varying magnitudes and frequencies together with coupling characteristics between the turbo rotor, pilot and spoilers and the ensuing effect on handling was investigated. From this, the most satisfactory control system parameters were determined. With the release of drawings of the main structural components, planning and tooling for manufacture of the test vehicle began. The circular plan form resulted in an economical tooling program requiring only 10 subassembly jigs and permitting the use of many identical parts. One final assembly jig is used for assembly of the main structural components. Manufacture of the 1700 different detail parts required for assembly of the major structural components of the vehicle commenced in a security guarded area where the vehicle was to be built. The basic structure of the Avro car comprises a center base around which three identical wing segments are assembled to form the circular plan form. The wing segments are separately fabricated from radial ribs and upper and lower skins. Ducts form between the ribs provide for the passage of air from the centrally located turbo rotor to the peripheral nozzle. Together with the center base and three additional ribs, the wing segments are married up in a final assembly jig. Engine air inlet ducts, each centrally divided by one of the three additional ribs, are formed between the wing segments on final assembly. The outboard end of each of these ribs is reinforced to carry a landing gear leg. As assembly of the primary structure of the first vehicle neared completion, manufacture of detailed parts and major structural components for a second vehicle advanced rapidly. After assembly of the primary structure, 
and the installation of the tricycle landing gear, the vehicle is removed from the final assembly jig. Three transverse beams enclose the turborotor, engines, and fuel tanks within a central triangular compartment. Each engine is installed in a separate bay, and fuel is supplied by three independent fuel systems. Crew and cargo compartments are located outboard of the transverse beams. The turborotor, which is a turbine compressor combination, was developed by Orenda Engines Limited. To achieve a lightweight unit, hollow brazed steel compressor blades are used. In this pilot program, one blade was processed to prove the suitability of the copper brazing employed in manufacture. The two compressor blade segments, a root fitting and a tip fitting, are installed in a jig. Flux is then applied prior to installation in a bell for brazing. The compound shaft on which the turborotor is mounted incorporates a bearing between the inner and outer components which permits the turborotor to topple fractionally. This motion is transmitted to the spoiler rings in the peripheral nozzle. Radiating from the hub of the turborotor, the 31 compressor blades terminate in fittings to which 31 turbine segments are attached. Each turbine segment incorporates four blades. A simulated inner wing with integral anti-swirl vanes was manufactured for the purpose of testing the turborotor. The turbine nozzle ring and turborotor casing were introduced to simulate as closely as possible the conditions under which the turborotor would operate in the vehicle. The completed turborotor was then installed. Finally, it was checked in readiness for the extensive ground test program. The entire assembly was mounted in the turborotor test rig and the tusk-shaped exhaust ducts used in the vehicle were fitted. To simulate the power provided by the three Continental engines, part of the output from one Orenda turbojet was ducted to the test rig.
one and a half. One hundred and fifty hours of testing were accomplished satisfactorily on the first turbo rotor. Subsequently, a second turbo rotor, which had been proof tested for eight and one half hours, was installed in the vehicle. The turbo rotor casing with turbine nozzle ring was then positioned. The third engine and its associated exhaust duct was installed. Attachment of the turbo rotor air inlet fairing followed. During construction, numerous tests were carried out on the various airplane systems. Typical of these were control system checks. Installation of the inner wingtip permitted mechanical checking of the transition control rings. The rings are used to direct air during hovering and transitional flight. After attachment of the outer wingtip, a final check is made of operating clearances. Similar tests were conducted on the spoiler rings and yaw control vanes in the throat of the peripheral nozzle. Fitting of canopies and hatches brought manufacture of the first Avro car to completion. The vehicle was weighed and estimated values of weight and balance were confirmed. After weighing, the Avro car was moved from manufacturing into the test area. This marked the end of the first part of the contract, some two months ahead of schedule. In the test area, equipment will be installed in the vehicle in preparation for the ground test program. Successful completion of ground tests will enable flight testing to commence and provide information required for development of the Avro car. Thank you.